Okay, it's a six scale, April 13th, 23. All right, let's begin with, uh, so I, we're not gonna go over the, um, the performance data. The only thing I wanted to point out is that uh, the, de the dedicated job is still failing. While the performance job is still looking good. So we're not gonna go through those results. And I think Ole, you've got them down here anyway. So we'll go look at those in a second. All right, uh, Ole, your patch merged, right? I think it did. Yes, <clears throat> it did. Great. So what's like uh, next steps after this? I think we said you've got this issue to store the data and then uh, and then we have a place to start publishing, right? Yes. Um, so I ran the tool. So currently the tool runs on SIG performance pre-submit job. So there are some ideas I have. One, uh, can we create a similar post submit job? So for example, I was digging into pro and you can, after each PR merges to uh, master, you can run a pro a post submit job. So we can understand impact of that PR merging in master. And instead of us running these data on uh, pre submits, which can be optional and which can, um, you know, it can vary depending on what goes in into the master. Like if you have five iteration in your PR, you'll get five job results. All of them could vary, right? So I was wondering if we can switch this to post submit, that will give us more accurate reflection of the changes that went into master. Mm, that's first thing. The second thing is, this job, uh, the tool that I have, it uses regex matching and that regex match doesn't work with the periodic performance job. The output of the build log is different. So either we need to fix the regex to make it work with both or we just need to do a blanket um, export of that artifact JSON across all jobs. So we don't have to do regex matches anymore. Um, I have not scoped out which one would be easier, but seems like the second one, which is uh, exporting that artifact directory into, um, into the GCS bucket will be more long-term solution, but it will not it will not give us historical data. For historical data, we'll still need the regex match. Um, so we have some choices to make there. And this post submit job, so I didn't fully catch everything. Like, what was the um, so the changes we want to add a post submit job to um, instead of a pre submit job? Is that what it was? Right. So what I was thinking is, so pre submit runs on on PRs that you post, right? So let's right. say you have PR 100 posted up. Mm -hmm. It runs a SIG uh, per scale job. Then you make a bunch of changes to that uh, PR. It runs again. Um, well, actually, I'm not sure because it's periodic, right? It's it's not uh, pre-submit. Mm. Oh, yeah. So you're talking um, about the... Well, yeah, okay, so we're not, so yeah, we're saying so when the data you're scraping is from the periodic. Okay, so, so, okay, so then, well, maybe, I mean, maybe what you're talking, maybe what you're kind of getting into is, is so we eventually do want to scrape the pre summits. So, I mean, maybe like, I mean, is it that, is that where you're going with this? It's like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I got confused the there a little bit. Yes. So, what I was thinking is instead of processing the pre submit, can we do, can we process post submit instead? So we have a deterministic result of what performance impact a PR brings to a master. Um, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I, I think I see the argument here. So it's like, we're measuring in the pre-submit anyway, like we have our thresholds. The purpose of the post-submit is to then capture, okay, it's been merged. Let's see, like, let's, let's capture this for the historical data now. Correct. Is that, yes. Okay. So, so that post-submit of... job will become our historical benchmark. So it will become the baseline. And then if any developer wants to compare uh, their particular PR result, they can look at the past two weeks post-submit job and compare it with their uh, pre-submit results. So the, I guess the important thing about this is that, or I guess one of the important differences is there's going to be one of these run. There could be n number of these run. So we would scrape some, one of the big differences is we're going to scrape this once and we post this to our historical data instead of scraping however n times to get the pre-submit results and, and, and okay. reading them. Okay. Yeah, so the post submit gives us baseline and the pre submit is a tool for developers to check their performance metrics. Oh. Uh, so was there so one set of data that that um that measures performance after okay so the thing about this is that we have to run the same test right we have to run the same performance test Correct. On the post yes. okay. Yeah, it's just the trigger mechanism differs. This one is, yeah, yeah on the PR and that one is on the March. Okay. And I believe there are some post submit jobs already. Uh, there should be, if not, um, it, it will be easy to add with Pro. At least yes. from the OpenShift land, that's what I remember. I wonder, like, I wonder if, I don't know if Lugo eventually joined, but I, I was kind of wondering if, um, because the way the CI runs, like what we basically want to get is like the last job before this merges, I think, or a, po or a post event. Like I think maybe they're, I think they're equivalent. And yeah. I don't know if there's a way to do that, but like, that's where I want to ask Lugo is, is if he knows or Daniel, if Daniel knows. So so um i mean it so here's the thing right i'm we have pre-submit jobs that could that will give out results anyway we're not going yeah. to change that all i'm saying is let's not use that as data point to um, influence our metrics over time let's run one job after things merge so that will give us a very deterministic line uh, of things that have changed over the past. And let's say if you are a developer that wants to measure your the impact of your changes, then you have the historical data to compare your changes with. So that will give us, that will solve two problems. One, it okay. will give a deterministic uh, result for comparison. Second, we, we continue to have the pre-submits to, for helping, um, you know, PR authors to compare something with. Okay. Yeah, that sounds fine. Okay. All right, that sounds good. All right, so I, I think we got a good picture. So we've got, we've got, uh, we can probably, Lavo can probably help us with this. This is, I'm sure we can work something up or give us a good example, or, or if you said there already was one. But the I think this would be pretty easy. And then the, um, I guess it's basically a copy paste, right? We just instead of pre submit, we make it post submit. And yeah. then this one, yeah, okay, expanding the regex or exporting. It sounds like we got to do number one because it's, this seems like it's going to give us the historical data. But I wonder if like we can make the, um, yeah, you're right that the, 
So the data, um, I thought we use the audit tool as part of the scraping. Like, is it, I know the results are different because the way it, it processes the data um, or goes through the, the different VMIs and the creation delete process. But I, I thought we'd do the audit tool somewhere. Like, is there enough, we can't yeah. scrape the, is there, we can't scrape the same results? Or is it just, they're so different? No, names so different? I think this, the like the problem is in the logic I use for regex, regex matching. So what I do is I regex match uh, VMI um, starter regex, right? And then all the data comes that follows that regex match is the audit tool output. Um, so I know that, okay, VMI results are here. I see. Uh, then I process the entire output and then I finish processing VMI. Then I look for um, VM okay. results starting point and okay. I omit that and then follow the audit tool um, until the end regex. So that is not the case with uh, periodic jobs. Periodic job only outputs a bunch of audit tool things. It doesn't differentiate between VM and, and VMI. So there is subtle differences there that, that I need to iron out to make this work across um, all, all, all our jobs. Okay, I'm like, it's in, what's, so here's, so here's sort of two things that I could say about this is, it would be one is that it would be cool if we can normalize our, all of our results. I mean, I, I don't think there's a problem in doing that. Like if we have it between jobs, it's probably just gonna make our life easier. And then maybe your regex isn't, is it going to require extra work? And then there's also a second part of this, and that, like, I'm thinking, in the way that you're tracking data over time, like, I'm thinking about um, sort of the way. So we're using a regex right now, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if what other if there's something more powerful here and more effective than doing it that's that's not as likely to be affected by um maybe this is where you're going with the with the with the artifact you know like yeah. we're we're not as affected by the um the regex or having to do mat pattern matching and then ex having certain expectations after we, we pattern match correct yeah the export artifact that is the second option will simply yeah. read a file on disk uh, and that will json on marshall it into the audit tool api so we'll get everything um, out of that um, without any like X matching, I think. Mm, okay. But 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 I think the um, another difference to call out is that the SIG performance pre-submit or periodic job, um, not the density cluster one, it runs the audit tool and gives out results for VMI and VM. I think the density one only runs for VMI. Right. It, it doesn't run VMs. So there, those are the kinds of differences like we need to iron out because that will that difference will stay whether we go route one or route two. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I mean, I guess, um, yeah, I, I'm more interested in, in, I guess maybe less interested in regex than, as long as we don't lose any sort of functionality like or and it's not too much of a pain than, than the artifacts sounds interesting i mean not only for like it, it sounds more interesting for you too like the like it might sound like a lot easier to deal with because i spending this regex is going to be hard and especially if we for example if we add anything to our existing job it's just going to break your regex or likely going to break the regex correct yeah so um that's um maybe what so there is third route what we could do is start exporting that artifact directory starting today <laughs> or as soon as possible. Um, and then hopefully we will have enough time before the releases to get enough uh, signal on the exported directory. And we might get away from uh, expanding that regex and using what we have right now. Yeah, you know, so we, we could do, I, I, I think like, so what I like about the current models like this this works for us gathering data right now and all the all the way in the past so what we could do is starting going forward is like 
supporting or have or have the artifact exported. And then we have the ability to to scrape from from both. And then you know as we we basically just slowly phase out the regex, I think. Like I think it's just as we because we don't want to lose that historical data. I think it's like for good reasons, like we've seen the changes and where the you know where the, where there's been a different changes in, in the past. And that's valuable. But like this is I think for even for the one over release, like so we've got uh, let's say like two months left before we do that release. So we can get two months of artifacts where we can point a few things out and then we can combine that with the historical data that we've got from the regex. And I think that gives us the picture we want. And then eventually we we look to yeah. um, we just move to the artifacts over time once once they're once we get enough data. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. So with that, it would make the export artifact like in that that's something we want to have soon. And then if time permits, yeah. then we can expand the regex to work across different jobs. Okay. What do we need to do this then? We probably need to ask the bow. I don't know. Do you know? I I'm not I'm really Yeah, not. um either Lubo or Daniel. Um it's they've mentioned where how to do that in one of our threads in Kubert Dev. So I'll I can you know, start that conversation again. Yeah, where is his email? Okay. Yeah, um, start another thread and let's get, um, I will assign you. On, uh, yeah, let's get this started and so we can get our, Oh yeah, I'm using my. This thing is like, all right. I know yeah. it's so frustrating how this works. Oh, I can't even see the button too. So it's my little. Um, Sorry. Yeah, just all right, forget it anyway. I'll just put in your name here, Ale. Yeah. There you go. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right. Wait. Anyway, we got a plan. I mean, we. That, we'll just see about there. Okay. So you start a thread. Let's get this going, and we'll um. Yeah, I think we can get this moving pretty quickly and then that'll give us the data we need. Cool. Okay, uh, let's go to the results. You got to let us know the base. All right, so this is the VMI and yeah, okay. All right, what do you want to look at here? Or do you want to share your screen? I mean, if you want to look at specific things or do you want to just kind of scroll through? Um, we can just scroll through. I mean, so yeah. I can mm, give you a highlight of what I did. So in your um, six Are these scale, Kali, by the way? Yes, so, yes. Yeah, okay, sweet. Yeah. In, in the original six scale document, you had uh, a list of metrics that we would like to collect, right? Um, yeah. Based on our previous conversations um, in this meeting. So I took all the entire set um, and scrape results for those. Um, it was getting really hard for me to look at it in just one plot. So I modified the tool to plot all the results in uh, one HTML page. Um, cool. And I did it for both VMI and VM. Um, so we could, I mean, that those changes are not up yet. I just did it for today's call. Um, I'll have to iron out changes there. So that, that's what you're seeing right now. But my thought process is that in our two or three calls from today, if this process works for us, then this is the output we can, you know, kind of standardize on. Um, and, and you can imagine this output being automatically generated each week. And we just go through these results um, over time. Yeah, so yeah, as you go cool. through these charts, if there are, there is any feedback um, that will help make our reviewing life easier, we can you know document and incorporate in the tool. So that's one thing. Okay. Yeah, and the next thing, going over the results itself, I didn't find any red flags. Most of the things look flat and as expected. These are the results from eight weeks of data crunching. 
one one thing i noticed is that the p95 uh, from creation to running um, for vmi and vm it's different um, can you search for p95 let's see it in here um can you search for creation Oh, I see. I, I see what happened. Okay, so I think we are missing that metric. Um, these are all just uh, create. So these yeah, are all just cube API calls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I need to add that. But yeah, what I was noticing is that um, P95 for a VM, creating a VMI is a little bit less than a user creating a VMI. I'm not sure if, oh, here's something interesting. Batch calls. Oh, there's a change here, yeah. March 5th. Looks like one more patch call. Yeah. You know, the other thing we could do, I was just, well, so I was doing the, like, like I'm doing the math in my head here. We know the create is a hundred. Like, so the, I mean, well, see, I, you could go away with this, but so this is, you could, you could divide by hundred here. And this means this would be like per VM. Yeah, I, I let's leave it, let's leave it. I, I think it's, that's fine. But yeah, I mean, this is just, yeah, we basically have one more here on March. Looks like it started uh, March 7th. We added a patch call. You can probably find yeah. this. And this is, we, we were at two. Uh, actually, we were at one patch call. So we went, we added three more in last two months. So basically this is, wow. yeah. March 7th. Yeah, I need to, hold on, I'm looking for the, um, the query for this. I remember I messaged. I got a message with it in and I just didn't find it. Okay, it's. Create instance type. Can you also look for March sixth? Yeah, expand it to. So we've got node labeler and add observed and desired generation of the status. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. See if we find our patch in there somewhere. Patch VM generation annotation on VMI. Patch VMI right there. Is that what it is? Is a VMI? Patch on the VMI? I'm sorry, what? 
is it a patch on the VMI? Is that what it is? Patch on yep. your transmission instances count for VM. Yeah, it is. So this looks like it's it. This one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've already, we've already well, we've four X star patch counts. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's fine. We just like, it's just kind of funny to see how we've, um, it's just cool to track that. <laughs> yeah. When we eventually have like estimates of like what this does at scale, like, cause I mean, you can even imagine if you were to doing some theoretical math, if you were to plug infinity into here, like the, your scale, eventually like having every single one of these will count, will make a difference. But yeah, we don't know what our limit is. So it's like hard to say like where it is that this actually starts to count. and, and matter but yeah you know what would be good to see um we know that before before the start of the year this patch call was just one and it has yeah. gone to four i wonder if we can you know take all those changes and combine it back into a single single call um so that way we mm -hmm. just have an increase of one um in this release um, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? Let me take this PR. I'm going to just put it in the notes. I'm going to link to the line. And I like the idea. Possibly combining this stuff. Not this one, not this one. This one, but okay, this is the line I need. Okay, we'll track that. You know what? So it would be cool to see. Um, so this is one of those things where, like, we released. Uh, actually, I don't know. Let's see. Zero five nine was what ended up being February. So between the zero five nine release and the V one release, there is a. I mean, it's like a. What's this? A twenty five percent increase in patch calls yeah it's not, not when you put it that way it's not a good look <laughs> you yeah. know it's just one <laughs> might scare some people okay all right what else did we see okay that's it all right we've caught another patch offender all right cool cool yeah, everything else here looks, looks cool. It's fine. Okay, that's cool. All right. I I so in the last call, sorry, can you go back? Oops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which one you want to look at? The um the VM? Yeah. So I some of the data, you see the list or count, it's like spread across um 
yeah. the, the second one. Yeah, it's spread across all like one, two, three, four. I don't know why. Like this is this expected? I don't know. I'm not sure. This might be one of those things where. No, actually, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. I was gonna say like I, if it has something to do with like other jobs running, but that wouldn't be it. Like, I don't think that would make sense. Like, I wonder if it's just one of those things that happens periodically. But it's almost like a pattern. I mean, you can see here. Like we've got four in a row. We've got two, two, two. And here we've got another four in a row. And I guess it goes up to three. No, not great. It's actually, no, it's not really a pattern. But I mean, it's it, yeah. I, it's kind of weird. I don't know. It's yeah, be hard to because identify. it's a <laughs> list call. Because it's a list yeah. call. I I wonder like if it might have impact, right? List calls are usually very expensive from API yep. server. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't understand. You see how like this is, like we got it here, like there's three dots. <laughs> there's two here. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is. And here's another one. I mean, here this is outrageous. So we, oh, it's just one zero. Okay, so like yeah. Okay, uh, that's yeah. That, still strange. Um, what was the last one you saw? The last list. This is VM virtual instance migrations. So. Um, yeah, so why does V, yeah, that's another question I have. Why VM controller has to call this resource, like a list call on this? Yeah, I don't know. Periodic, periodically, I don't know. Maybe it's, no, when do we start in? I don't know. Not sure. <laughs> that is weird. I don't know. This is a good one to investigate because you're right. These, these are expensive. This was another one I know we had, I'd asked about before. Like, why are we listing nodes? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't able to find this. Yeah, maybe the node labeler. Um, it has oh, to. Node labeler is that to... what's it? Okay. Yeah, it has to expose okay. a bunch of cube word labels, um, I think. See, I think it's doing the list. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice to get rid of that list. There is any way to, to do that. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, things we can keep looking at. I mean, as long as like, I mean, these patterns are, yeah, it'd be nice to get rid of them. We just want to make sure they don't increase. This is exactly the kind of thing we definitely want to make sure don't change. So, okay. Well, this looks good away. It's okay, cool. And um, so, how's this going to look? So, when we um, overall, it's going to look. So, you, this is how you publish. And um, when we go into like, so, like, I just want to picture the way this is looking. See how health, um, where's our see health here? So when we go into, uh, let's say, uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. So what would basically would it, would we have the equivalent here? Is that what you're thinking? Or is it, we have it in a folder. We have these plotly graphs um, with like the weeklies. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So, so, like so with CI health, right? It's it's really easy. The amount of metrics is is one or two. You can have uh, the graphs plotted here. I'm yeah. the the graphs that we have. There are so many. I am actually not sure how to go about that. Do you have any ideas? 
No, but I like the way, so to me, this is a good, I mean, this is a good attempt. So, I mean, I, I'm like all for you playing around with this and like, if you just want to throw it up on a the GitHub page and we say like, looks good, looks bad and try something else, that's fine with me. I, I don't know, like, I really don't see a, I like, or even if we put these into folders and generate them, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that's anything you think, I think will be fine. I don't, I don't really. Yeah. I mean, this is so, useful so to I me, think so. One, one idea I had is that, so right now how this is happening is this, I have a repository six scale health on my personal GitHub. And it has a weekly directory with VMI and VM. And these are just index files, index.html file in there. Um, if we can, you know, agree on one metric that we want to show in the readme, right? So let's say creation to running VMI P99 mm -hmm. uh, or, or two max. Okay. Then what we could have is a separate uh directory just for that image and that image will pop up in the readme so then the readme will have that image and then if you want uh like our weekly six scale talks can look at this uh in-depth uh, performance metrics so that that'll that'll be like okay a viewer coming in um wants to get an overview of what is happening they can look at these graphs here and then if you want to uh, dig into details, go to this, the, the index HTML page. Yeah, okay, they got a good photo. I was gonna say we could what we could do is we can create a static web page. That'd be super easy to do. Um, yeah, 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 that's, that's what I have right now. The, yeah, that's a Perfect. static web page. Um, yeah, okay, that's, that's a, okay. So I was gonna say, okay, then we can just go with this. like. I think like where we go with this is maybe like you just said, you publish a few things on the on the readme here and then we link to this page and then that's the like our detailed view. Yeah. With all the cool stuff of the latest from from whatever last week. Yep. Okay. And um does eight weeks sound good to you? I mean, uh, our release will be three months. So yeah, we, we want to get, yeah, we want to do, hmm. Four months. so can we do, so I like, I'm a little more inclined to do like more than one release. So if we, I don't know if we can do that, but so we can do, um, so what's interesting is like, if we were to, well, I mean, for this time around, maybe we just do zero five nine, but let's say for the one, the next release after one hour is, Zero five nine one zero and whatever that is one 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 or whatever we call it. Um, that release we we graph all three of them and we have a comparison across the three, so the latest and then the previous two and then we just kind of because that's kind of like our window right like our support window is like the, the yeah. latest three. So I was thinking we just do we just do those three. Yeah, that I think that will take us to a year. Um, so there there will be fifty two yeah. weeks. Yeah. A year. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that's right. I think we need to start preparing for that. So in in any other notes, I think in the further steps, um, we will have to add that. Um, we'll have to start exporting the output directory. So even if that bucket is garbage collected, we have this um, historical data for the current um, runs captured. Okay. Yeah, that will that will keep the door open for um let's say from a year out now from now we want to process this data. Um we can plot it in a graph. Okay, sounds good. I think that's where we can go to.
yeah, I think that makes sense. We'll start going this direction. Then. Okay, I'm gonna lay it. So I think we then, so we need to get this um, issue sorted and then I think we can start doing your publishing. We get the automation hooked up and then you can have your GitHub page somewhere and, and then maybe once you can get a readme, then I think, yeah, so we start doing for review and then eventually we can look at some of this stuff. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Lily. Cool. All right. Anything else? Then I think that's all the topics we got for today. Uh, I don't know if you're still here, Ellie. Do you got anything you wanted to bring up? Um. So one thing before we start, we actually save our artifacts in S3 bucket. I don't know if it can suitable for your solution because I understand that you want to save your uh, the HTML files uh, somewhere. Uh, am I right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, um, also in S3 bracket, you can um, actually minimize the duration so it how to delete if it's more than two months or something like that so you don't need to maintenance uh, all the cleanup and all this stuff so it can be option to if, if it can be option so think about it um i don't know just so you're uh, saying that we can um, stop the cleanup job from happening uh, actually, you say that you want to save your uh, plot somewhere, right? The HTML, right? Yeah. So what I was thinking was those HTML will be saved in a GitHub repository that will be given by 2705. Uh, okay. And redirect it to another repo. Correct. Yes. Um, Okay, it can be okay. Yes, I think it's okay because you have it's a yeah. good idea, but you need to uh, maybe to do a job that uh, update it automatically by a GitHub action or something like that, right? Yes, that was captured last time um, in, in our last meeting notes that we had, we have to have that automation. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. can be an option, and if you can save it, uh, maybe in uh, directories and you know, like uh, like S three buckets, so you can fetch it uh, fast later. Yeah, yeah, I think that's how CI Health does it. So we can um, we can take all of the inspiration from CI Health. If you look at uh, the workflows folder. The first mm -hmm. one. Ah. Yes, this is this has jobs to post data and upload it to to the output directory. Here, the last one, the last four lines. And actually, the output yeah. directory is another repository, right? No, it's the same repository. Yeah, so it will save locally yeah. inside the repository. And, and did you yeah. split it by uh, um, actually you organize it by daytime? So... Yes, date starting date of Monday. Monday no, starting. In folders. I said, um, do you have a folder for each run with date, uh, something like that? For each I run have because... with the job ID. So Pro gives us a unique job ID for mm -hmm. each run. And what about cleanup? Yeah, actually, we, it will be stay there forever, right? Um, yeah, so we need to clean up the data, which is after 52 mm -hmm. weeks. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. We'll, so we'll if, still if be you time. organize it by dedicated folder, so you can do deletion by you know the world folder if you organize it by year and cyber directory month 
and after it day. So you can by one click drop uh, the root directory and it's all gone, something like that. So you can yeah. be more simple to organize it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so I have two um, phases in, in the current tool. First phase, it collects data and does this regex match that I was talking earlier that mm -hmm. that outputs the files into performance, job name, job ID, and then results.json. So that's step one. Then uh, it, it has the date and time of when the job was run. Mm. Um, ah, the because you want to fetch it, uh, you want to connect it to the job that run. Correct. Then the next step is to take all of those jobs and organize into weekly folders. So start, let's say this week, mm. starting Monday, um, yeah. The folder date will be starting Monday. Makes sense. That will so be the name. Sense. Correct. And then inside of that, I have VM and VMIs. And in mm. that, I have the weekly aggregation. So that includes data points for all uh, throughout the week, mm. all the jobs. And, that and, and by the way, it's a Prometheus query for this call list, get, and all this put, right? It's Prometheus query that run and fetch it in general, I ask about uh, yes. your tooling, right? Yes. Because we yes. we run it against our run and we split it between read and write. So, you know, if it's a put, so it's mean that it's, uh, for example, write. And if it's just get, it's read. So we split between read and write and do the wall calculation and not drill down in, into specific uh, call. So we have a generic how much, how much read was, how much write was, so we can see the distribution across time. I don't know if it's, if it's uh, enough to find the performance issue because your, in your um, way, you actually drill down inside so you can, really like microscope and see what actually can cause the issue. So maybe yeah, that so the reason I can give an explanation to you why it would be good to have drill down from read and write. So for example, we were discussing about the list calls, right, earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it is a known problem that if you come up with a shrewd enough um, list of list calls, it, it can take down API server. So API server can actually umkill on, let's say, 100 or 1,000 list calls where the list call is large enough. The data wow. return from the list is large enough. So even if you have a read and write, internally, if that read consists of 10 list call versus one um, get call, matters um, in comparison to 10 get calls and one list call. Um, so that is the reason why I think we have separated out um, in, into each API call, um, which will help us you know, keep track of at least the list calls, um, because we know that's expensive. We know patch can, could be expensive. So I hope that answers. Yes, but um, it's very difficult, you know, to find where is the, the problem in your HTML. So we build it in inside heat map and just put the number, the average right. number inside so we can see clear where is in each API call we have the exact problem and we can see it in, in, in one, uh, let's say one uh, screen and we don't need to scroll up, down. It's very difficult. Is there is a way to do a summarize um, um, HTML so you can see all and after it, if you want to see a drill down to enter into, into it. So I think for... Yeah. 
it will be very simple later on to monitor. And only if you want to investigate something, so you drill down into each call separately, if, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're, that makes sense to me. So um, we were doing this over text, right? Like this is the first iteration of doing this over graph. So mm -hmm. um, what in the graph, what is helpful is that we only drill down if you see a spike up or spike down. Uh -huh. So I think that is something Ryan and I are getting used to. But, now. but you have it for, for each call, you have right. a separate graph. So it's very right. difficult to follow up it. If you want, you know, every day to enter or something like that, or once a week to enter to see if everything, what what actually, if there is a, a, any drop in, a, any drop or any improvement to see it and to understand and not to roll down, uh, scroll down and up and see which graph. So it's. You know, summary uh, summary dashboard, if you understand what I mean. I don't know if yes. it's something that you can do, but for sure yeah, that's in general, what I was wondering is that so the graphs you see is um it has a lot of different uh, meanings. I'm I don't have ideas on how to effectively summarize them mm -hmm. um, in into one. I mean, that's, uh, that's do we have that... average for each run? Do we, can we find yeah. average for each run, or it's just um, you know a bunch? Each one is separately. So, if you can, for example, aggregate for each API call or for each metrics that you calculate the average, so you can at least distribute it in one plot and show it there uh, oh each oh, one I separately see. and after it if there is any um changes so you can see it uh, very very simple but um right. i don't know we we are using the grafana but i cannot compare it to your wave so uh it's very difficult. So in Grafana, it's more simple, but it's very difficult to to make. Uh, you actually create it uh, open source, so you can follow up it by weekly. Um, I don't know, but I think that for now you can go and see the things. But when you want to add more and more metrics, it will be very difficult to monitor it um yeah that's a good point Brian, for, for now to... it's okay for now if it's okay if we say that this is we have a uh, 20 metrics for long term so we okay but what will be when it would be 50 60 i think that human being cannot follow up it's uh, just if we do only this task <laughs> yeah and, that makes sense and that's where, um, Ryan, like we have a Grafana dashboard um, as yes, well, right? Maybe it's, uh, there is also now Grafana open source. Did you hear about it? That you can get uh, account free. Uh, <clears throat> and they give you till 5 giga Grafana, so you can distribute the data to there and get it by free. Did you hear about it or not? No, I have not, but we we have gra like Grafana set up for our um, performance jobs. I was wondering yeah, the dedicated cluster. Yeah, it has it. Yeah. So I wonder and what if the this problem is to static. distribute the data to there, and what what the problem? The job's not working. The job's not working, so there's no data in there. That's why. Hmm. So the job cannot distribute the data to data lake, no, no, no. data warehouse. Hmm? No, 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 no. The the it's um I was talking about it at the beginning. Right now the job is failing. 
So this is what I'm saying. So we need to fix this. You can see here. So it's mm. been failing for a little bit. So that's why it's not getting, there's no data in here. It's just not working. I don't, I don't even know what, how long this has been. What's the, what's the date of this? 324. So it's almost like, like two, three weeks. So there's nothing in here. I mean, I'm looking for uh, the last hour. No, so no, I don't see. ask about it. I ask about if uh, he can distribute the metric he show in the HTML into the Grafana dashboard if there is option to have a dedicated panel inside the Grafana. Yeah, there is. This is, uh, I think this is published somewhere. I didn't, that might already be here. This is there. I, I just ask why we, you, you need to maintain it inside the HTML file. Because they're two different, so they're two different things. So what Alay is doing is he's getting the periodic jobs here and he's scraping this stuff. And the reason this is different is this creates and destroys a cluster every, every three times a day. So there's no Grafana okay. for this. We can't, we can't, um, there's no way to get this into a dashboard. So this is the, here's the difference is that this one's a dedicated cluster. It's running all the time. And we can capture this in Grafana as much as we want because it's always running and it's the only thing that's using it. So for all this stuff no, in here Ryan. and pre-submits won't, won't work. Yeah. Brian, what I was wondering is if we can configure access to that always running Grafana, right? Or for Prometheus uh -huh. instance and push metrics from this weekly script into that Grafana um, right and have like a, yes, in here. Into a heat and map, for example. We, we are using heat map across date. So you, in the heat map, you can yeah. store for each metric, so the average no, and see there, the data. No, Ali, um, Ali you yes. are talking about the organization of data, right? I think there is a pre-step to it where this, this instance does not have the data from what we, the scrap that we are doing. So what I was saying, suggesting Ran is that the step one is to push it, push the data into this Prometheus instance for which we will need access to. And then step two is to create a panel um, that says SIG performance periodic review. Um, mm -hmm. And then that becomes your entry point to review this dashboard. And then if you need to drill down from here, you can go hop on to the HTML and, and look at a specific thing. Or, or something like that. I'm not sure if this is a possible. I don't know. You just I mean, want to store here the link for your HTML file. So by one click, it re redirects to there by day. This is what you mean? No, no. This Prometheus instance does not have the data that we are displaying in HTML. Um, that's what Ryan was saying that there, there, are, there are two separate scripts. Oh, let, let me explain you what we did in order to save history data. We use Elasticsearch. We upload the data to Elasticsearch and connect it to the Grafana. And so inside the Grafana, we can show this data, the history data that you talk about it or the job data, whatever you wish inside the Elasticsearch. So the Grafana, I know it's related to Prometheus and it's real-time data, but in order to use history data, we use Elasticsearch. Yeah, Ellie. The, so I think what we're getting, I think we're kind of fitting around. So maybe we're we're talking sort of in. Yes. I think we're saying the same thing. Like, well, basically, what what I think what you're saying is you want to see the data that Ellie has here. You want to see it from here, and so and Ellie is saying that. What we need to do is push it into the Prometheus instance that that's backing this. I don't know how we do that, but let's just say there is a way to do that. If there was, then that would be neat because then we could have all our historical artifacts tracked in Grafana, and then we wouldn't have to then make a lot of things easier. But I don't know how how realistic that is. But maybe we can have that conversation if we think it's possible. But I mean, it might not be that easy. If maybe we need, maybe we need Elasticsearch, maybe we need some other repository to store the stuff. There might be a huge effort involved to doing it. Whereas, like, I mean, I, this is really good, and this is already handy. So I don't know. I mean, it it we would need to do a lot of scoping to figure out if this is the possibility of doing this. 
and we also this this there's also other consequences too like this cluster like it's hosted by ibm it's hosted like what is the i don't know mm -hmm. what the timeline of this stuff is like is maybe this gets repurposed at some point and then you know we run into a problem i mean i, I kind of like this idea and i understand that there's some challenges with it but maybe what we do we deal with it by i mean we deal with it by wasting what we have now and if we um you know, like you're saying, Ellie, if this becomes a problem when we start to expand the metrics, you know, maybe this is when we look in, because the maintenance becomes a problem, we look into, um, you know, expanding it to, to Grafana or something. Because I, I just like, unless we know the scope off the top of our heads, I, I don't I don't think this, this doesn't sound easy. This sounds very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I don't want to say the door is closed on it, but we, we can consider it. I just think that we it will take some work to fully understand what, what's involved to do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a good point, though. So I, I we're, we're a few minutes over. So guys, I, I think we gotta we gotta wrap this up. So thanks for discussion. We've got a few action items for next time and um, next week. So next week I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel. I'm gonna be at KubeCon, so I'm not gonna, be gonna make it. So we will convene again in two weeks. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye. <clears throat> Bye.